hello guys welcome back to another video in the last video we have covered about fresh photo generator and you guys have shown tremendous support on that video thank you so much for your support i am back with another new video and the topic for today's video is propeller shafting system and thrust block and its position i have one more request to you guys for the last video you have appreciated my work on my messages but if you show that appreciation on my comment section then youtube will also appreciate that i think you can understand so without wasting further time let's get started so in this video we are going to cover five topics so first topic is propeller shafting system second topic is thrust transmission block diagram third topic is reduction gear fourth topic is where should we place the thrust block fifth topic is why thrust block is placed near to main engine and why not placed near to stern tube so let's move to our first topic propeller shafting system we are going to cover this from the aft the first part is our propeller this is our propeller as we all know that so the shaft that is connected with the propeller is called tail shaft or propeller shaft and this is the stern tube stern tube is till the aft peak bulkhead till here it is stern tube so the stern tube got two bearings aft and forward bearings and i don't want to go in the details of the stern tube maybe we will cover this stern tube in next video or next to next video as per your choice but in this video i don't want the video to go lengthy beyond 7 to 8 minutes so this is the stern tube and the shaft that is connected to the propeller that is tail shaft or propeller shaft so after the stern tube we are having a one flange maybe you guys know or maybe you don't know that propeller shaft is not the entire complete one shaft it is in the parts and they are connected with the help of flanges so this stern tube or this tail shaft is still here and after that we are having a one flange and after the flange our intermediate shaft will start so intermediate shaft is supported by intermediate shaft bearings this is the first bearing this is the second intermediate shaft bearing till here it is running so intermediate shaft is running from here till here so here we got our another flange intermediate shaft provide three works first is to support the intermediate shaft second is to lubricate the intermediate shaft and the third one is to absorb the thrust which is coming from the tail shaft and it will send back the thrust to the hull of the ship and after the intermediate shaft we are having our another part that is called reduction gear and this i will explain the reduction gear in little bit detail in my third point and after the reduction gear we are having our flywheel and after the flywheel we are having thrust block so after the intermediate shaft we can say this shaft is called thrust shaft and from this side also the shaft which is connecting the thrust block to the crank shaft is also called thrust shaft so these are the parts that are connected from the propeller till the main engine so in the next slide i will show you some other photos that you can have more idea about this shafting system so this is the another image here you can see that this is the stern tube and it is still here and after the stern tube we are having our flange and after the flange we are having two intermediate shaft bearings and this is the intermediate shaft and after the intermediate shaft we have another bearing and this is the thrust block in this diagram i will tell you that where to place the thrust block and you will ask that in the previous slide i have shown the thrust block after the flywheel but in this diagram it is shown before the flywheel i have separate topic about this that is our fourth topic so don't worry we will cover about this let's move to another slide so in this slide you can see this is the aft peak bulkhead so this is our stern tube till here this is the aft bearings this is the forward bearings and after this we are having our flange this is our intermediate shaft bearing this is our intermediate shaft bearing and how this is connected with the hull of the ship so that you can understand how the thrust is transferred from the intermediate shaft bearing to the hull of the ship because it is bolted down to the hull after the intermediate shaft bearing we are having another flange so in this picture you can see that the length of the shaft is not too much so we are having only one intermediate shaft bearing the intermediate shaft bearing can be one or twice or maybe thrice also so it depends on ship to ship so this is our thrust block you can see that and this is before the flywheel so it is also bolted down with the hull of the ship let's move to another slide in this slide you are seeing 
thrust block flanges and these are the intermediate shaft bearings now i think you have a clear idea that how thrust block looks like and how the shaft goes from the shaft tunnels and all so let's move to our second point and the second point is thrust transmission block diagram so this is the thrust transmission block diagram you can see in this picture that first part is propeller thrust propeller thrust is transferred to the propeller shaft and the another name of propeller shaft is our tail shaft where our stentive is also placed so after the propeller shaft we have intermediate shaft intermediate shaft bearings will also absorb the thrust and they will send it to the hull of the ship some part of the transmission is also in this part after the intermediate shaft the thrust is going to the thrust block and thrust block goods thrust pads and thrust coolers so they will absorb the thrust and send it to the bed plate that is our another main engine bed plate and if they are connected directly to the hull of the ship then they will directly send the thrust to the hull of the ship after the bed plate we are having holding down bolts and after the holding down bolts we are having ship cell so that's how in the chain we can see that how the thrust is transferred from the propeller shaft to the ship's hull so let's move to our third topic reduction gear reduction gear first question is what is reduction gear and what is the work of a reduction gear so the work of reduction gear is to reduce the speed of the engine why we need to decrease the speed of engine suppose if our engine is rotating at 100 rpm means in one minute it is rotating 100 tons and on propeller side we want only 20 tons per minute 20 rpm on our propeller side so how we will maintain that to maintain that we are using reduction gear now our second question came how the reduction gear reduce the speed of the engine from 100 to 20 or whatever this is its input shaft this is its output shaft the shaft which is connected from the crankshaft is connected to this input shaft and the shaft which is connected to the propeller this is connected to output shaft uh, how to reduce the speed how it works it works on the teeth this is one pinion this is another pinion and both are having teeth and both the teeth are meshing to each other it determines the speed of the output shaft how if the number of teeth on the input shaft is more than the number of teeth on the output shaft then output shaft will rotate faster but if the teeth on the output shaft are more in comparison to the input shaft then output shaft rotates much slower speed so it works like that so this is the main function of the reduction gear and this is the main working of the reduction gear it depends on the meshing of teeth if one pinion having more teeth and one pinion having less teeth so the number of teeth that are meshing that determines the speed of the output shaft we can increase also and we can decrease also we use reduction gear for the high speed engines but on our ships we are using slow speed engines and medium speed engines we are not using high speed engines four stroke engines are basically our high speed engines but we are not using four stroke engines as our pro main propulsion engine so we are not using reduction gear much but we should have idea about reduction gear that's why i covered this topic let's move to our fourth topic that is where should we place the thrust block so let's first know something about thrust block what is thrust block the main work of thrust block is to absorb the thrust and pass on to the ship's hull this is the work of a thrust block so these are the thrust pads this is thrust cooler this is the casing these are the oil deflectors these are the bearings this is the upper part this is the lower part from lower part you can see it is connected to the ship's hull or bed plate this is the shaft that is running in between the thrust block this thrust cooler is not a plate it's like a hollow flange and shaft is going in between this when the shaft is rotating it will take the thrust from the shaft so thrust pads as well as thrust coolers both will absorb the thrust and the absorbed thrust will be transferred to the lower part and from the lower part it is transferred to the ship cell it is very simple and if you go deep in the lubrication part that how it is lubricated and how the parts are moving inside this so that's another big topic i don't want to touch this topic now i am just explaining the basic of the thrust block what is the work of a thrust block and what are the components inside the thrust block where should we place the thrust block so this is our fourth topic so first you need to know about nodes and anti nodes what are the nodes and anti nodes first point is thrust block should be placed on node then what is node node is a point 
where amplitude of vibration is zero or near to zero so the point where vibration is minimum that point is called node point where amplitude of vibration is maximum that is called anti node so thrust box always should be placed on node not on an anti node and our next point is that's why we can place the thrust block anywhere before the flywheel and after the flywheel also we can place the thrust block anywhere after the flywheel also before the flywheel also but it should be on node let's move to another point but crankshaft should never come on anti node so we have to place the thrust block like that the thrust block should be on node but the crankshaft should not be on anti node we have a lots of nodes and anti nodes on the shaft we are not having a single node or anti node on a shaft before 15 20 years we are placing our thrust block before the flywheel but from recent 15 20 years we are placing our thrust block before the flywheel because of some practical experiment they have found that when we place the thrust block before the flywheel we are having less vibration in the crankshaft but when we are placing the thrust block before the flywheel it will face more vibration that's why they are placing the thrust block before the flywheel this is the graph of the amplitude of vibration so this point is the minimum vibration this point is the maximum vibration this point you can see maximum vibration actually this is going little bit like this so anti node is not on the middle of the crankshaft it is just touching the end of the crankshaft to absorb the maximum vibration in the crankshaft we are placing our damper on the anti node we are placing the thrust block on the node and we are placing the damper on the anti node damper or detuner its work is to absorb the vibration or the maximum vibration but practically we can't place the damper on the exact anti node we have to place just after the crankshaft let's move to our last point that is why thrust block is placed near to main engine and why not placed near to stern tube so to explain this we are having two reasons first is if we place the thrust block near to the stern tube what will happen so the first reason is the number of nodal points near to the stern tube are very less in comparison to near to main engine so we are having a lot of nodal points near to main engine but we are having very less number of nodal points near to stern tube that's why we prefer to put the thrust block near to the main engine let's move to second reason second reason is if we place the thrust block near to the stern tube and it absorb the thrust then it will pass on the thrust to the hull of the ship after passing you can see that the area of cross section is very less the area of cross section will shrink when we are going from the middle of the ship to the aft of the ship so near to the middle of the ship we are having the larger area of cross section so when it is passing on the thrust if we are having a very lesser area so the thrust that is passed is also lesser or it will not work as efficient as it is near to the main engine near to main engine we have larger area of cross section so that it can pass off the maximum thrust so these are the two reasons why we are not placing our thrust block near to the stern tube and why we are placing near to main engine i think now you are very clear about the position of the thrust block location of the thrust block and why it should be placed there that's all for this video guys and in the next video we will cover the topic which you will ask me to cover in the comment section i will wait for your comments and how you like the video that also you will comment in the comment section till then like share and subscribe this video and we will meet in the next video